Hey Code Crew, thank you so much for your comments in my last two videos telling me which APIs you'd like to see me work with. Here's a short list of APIs that I've gathered from your comments. If I've missed any, please let me know. Now over time, I'm going to cover all of them, but in this video, I'd like to teach you guys the skills to work with any sort of API. You'll learn how to work with SDKs as well as how to manually roll your own request to send to API endpoints. Hi, I'm Chris, and if this is your first time here, welcome to Code with Chris, where we'll teach you how to build an app even if you've never coded before. Now before we dive into the wonderful world of APIs, I highly encourage you to comment below with what specific API you're looking to work with. Because if you're watching this video, then that's your goal, right? Tell me what that lucky API is. And on your way down there, if you wouldn't mind giving that thumbs up button just a little tap, that really helps the channel and I really, really appreciate it. All right, so let's talk about APIs. When you're working with an API, you'll encounter one of two things. Either they have an SDK for the platform you're working with or they don't. For us building iOS apps, we're looking for an iOS SDK. Now, if you're not familiar with what an SDK is, check out this video. It stands for Software Development Kit, and it's basically a library of code that is going to make our life easier working with that specific API. You pop the SDK into your Xcode project and you use the provided classes and methods to interact with that API. All of the nitty gritty details are abstracted from you. Let's take a look at an SDK example from one of the APIs that you guys suggested, the Spotify API. One quick thing before we dive in, support for this video comes from Atlantic.net, a hosting solution provider of healthcare HIPAA and PCI compliance. Whether you're starting fresh or need a new provider, Atlantic.net can help you succeed with fully audited solutions and 25 years of experience. Try Atlantic.net to develop, test, or launch your next project. These guys won't let you down. Right now, they're offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs and block storage for free for a year and free snapshots for one year too, plus $25 in free credits to use on any other services they offer. Ease of use is something that I like as it frees up my mind to focus on coding. I also like that they have round the clock phone support. So if I happen to get stuck, I can contact them easily. So visit Atlantic.net slash code with Chris and enter the code Chris to get your $25 free credit. To give them a try, simply visit atlantic.net slash code with Chris. And after you sign up, use the code Chris to get $25 free credit. All right, now let's go back to our Spotify API. So here we have the Spotify iOS SDK, but for the API that you wanna work with, just double check if they have an iOS SDK or an SDK for the platform that you're building for. In the case of Spotify, they do have uh, SDKs for several different platforms and they also have their web API. So if there is no SDK for your platform, you can always manually re uh, create requests and send it to these API endpoints and parse the response. Um, and this is something I'm going to show you uh, a step-by-step -step example with later in this video. Uh, for this example, for Spotify, I wanted to run through their SDK because I want to show you a, an example of what you might encounter uh, for the API that you want to work with. Uh, what do you do when you find out that they do have an SDK? So for the Spotify iOS SDK, uh, usually with any platform, if they do have an SDK, they're going to have tons of documentation for you, as is this case. If you take a look down the side here, you'll see uh, tons of great stuff. Scroll down a little bit. This just tells you what it's about and what it can do. But uh, I usually look for the tutorials and examples and quick start, any code samples. That's always good. So if you take a look at this quick start, here are the steps that you need to do. So register your developer app, and this is common for most APIs, I would say. You have to register for an API key um, that you pass in along with your API calls so that they can identify who is making those API calls, and they will also rate limit you. So if your app is making too many API calls too often, then they can temporarily uh, either rate limit or deactivate your API key to prevent that abuse. That's what it's for. Um, also, the next step they tell you here is to install the Spotify app. Now, I thought this was really strange to begin with because why would I need this Spotify app? And it turns out that one of the features of this iOS SDK for Spotify is to have your app be a remote control, I guess, uh, for the playback that is happening in the actual Spotify app on your computer. So you can kind of stay in sync with what's playing on the Spotify app. 
Uh, next is to download the iOS SDK. Now this is this is what we're after, right? So it is hosted on the GitHub repository. Uh, and this actually leads to the change log page. Okay, so this is the main page of the iOS SDK where the code is hosted and stuff. Notice that there is a demo projects folder. And if you check in here, there's a ton of samples that you'll probably want to browse through if you're using this SDK. Now, typically on the front page of the GitHub repository, they'll have uh, kind of the key information for how to install the SDK and how to use it as well. Uh, in the past, I've done videos where we integrate SDKs using CocoaPods, but sometimes that won't be available. So you're going to have to manually uh, integrate this SDK into your Xcode project. CocoaPods makes it really easy. If you want an example of that, check out my video here where I integrate the Firebase SDK into Xcode uh, with CocoaPods. So in this case, the Spotify iOS SDK doesn't have a CocoaPod. So we're going to have to do it according to their instructions. If we take a look at uh, under the tutorial section, you're going to see uh, just how to do that. So here it says download the framework from the top of the page, um, install the Spotify app, which we already know about, register your, your application. So get an API key or a client ID, they call it here. Uh, and then you're going to add the Spotify iOS dot framework to your Xcode project. So you literally just drag it and drop it in there. And this is the thing that you, you got in step one up here. Right, and then you're going to have to set some uh, values in your P list and then you can do some of the setup code that's outlined here. But in general, just as some general advice, working with an SDK is going to be mostly reading documentation and being able to follow instructions. So your experience is really going to be dependent on how up to date this documentation is, you know, and how accurate is it. Let's go back to the quick start for a second. So after you've integrated the SDK into your Xcode project, um, usually they'll give you some quick start or sample code to get you up and running with using their uh, SDK and API. So what I would do is follow some of these directions and kind of see if you get the result that's expected. Now, hopefully they have a lot of code samples and explanations on how to use uh, the various features of the SDK. But if they don't, um, what I would do is look for a reference of their classes and methods in their SDK because remember it's just a library of classes right so if you take a look at what the classes are dive into these references take a look at what methods what properties are available um, and then you know read the descriptions there you'll also get a really good idea of what's available inside this SDK so actually integrating this Spotify SDK and diving into it is beyond the scope of this video um, I mainly wanted to show you uh, kind of what you would do if you encountered uh, an iOS SDK for the API of your choice. Now, if the API that you want to work with doesn't have an SDK for your platform, then let's take a look at what we do. Now, if there's no SDK for your platform, don't freak out. We can still work with the API the manual way using iOS networking classes. That means we're going to create our own URL request specifying our API key, the header parameters, the data in the body, and we're going to send that request off to the API endpoint. And when we get the response back from the API, we're going to have to manually parse that data to use it. Let's take a look at an example of manually hitting an API using one of the APIs that you guys suggested, Rapid API. So one of you guys mentioned Rapid API in one of the comments you left for me, and I thought it was interesting, so I checked it out. It turns out that it's an API marketplace one SDK, one API key, one dashboard. So that sounds really cool. But the thing is, um, most of these APIs are uh, basically they have a free tier, but then there are paid tiers for more access. So the free tier gives you, uh, you know, an X number of calls per month. And then if you're serious about it and you want to use more of that API, then you have to start paying. The cool thing is that the data is really good. I mean, I'll, I recognize a lot of these platforms and APIs. And if you're serious about the app that you're building, you need to get your data from somewhere and the data needs to be good, right? So it really depends what you're looking for. But even if you don't want to pay for API usage, 
this is still a really good place to kind of learn the ropes with working with the API because the documentation is really good and there's a lot of sample code. And so I decided to pick one of the APIs here from Rapid API and show you guys how to make a manual API call. So the API that I've chosen to work with is an OCR text extractor API because I'm actually really bad with receipts. I lose them in random pockets. And when I do remember to take an image of it to later upload to Dropbox, I still have to remember to name it properly, put it in the right folder. And uh, it's just a hassle. So one of my dreams has been to create an app that's specifically just for me and for my situation. Um, where I can take a picture of the receipt, have it extract the location and uh, the date and time and all that stuff, and then just put it into Dropbox for me without me lifting a single finger, just having taken the image. And, you know, that would be a perfect use case. So that's why I'm interested in this particular API. Now, what we're going to do here with this API is to manually make an API call from Xcode or from Swift. Uh, so just taking a look at what we have here, we have four endpoints. Two of them are get, which is uh, to retrieve some data. Uh, here we're listing out the OCR engine options, language options, not really interesting. This is more interesting. Here we're posting. This is usually submitting data. So this one is extracting text from an image URL. Uh, as you can see here, this is a code snippet. And you see, this is the cool thing here. You can choose Swift as your language. And you can take a look at how to perform this API call in Swift. Uh, you can see here one of the parameters is actually the image URL. Now this endpoint here is extracting text from an image file. So you're actually going to be passing in the entire image data. So I'm going to be showing you how to use this one. This image is actually just the Google logo right here. So it should be pretty easy for their engine to extract. Um, but rather than taking this uh, snippet, we're going to just manually type it out so I can explain things along the way. The documentation here on this column, uh, these are the parameters that you're going to need to specify. And uh, yeah, but before we dive in and write this in Xcode, I need to do a high level explanation of what's going on just in case you're brand new to iOS networking. So first, we're going to create a URL object pointing to the uh, API endpoint that we want to hit. And then we're going to create a request object passing in that URL. But we can't send the request off just yet. We have to specify those header parameters and that body data that's required by the API in order for our request to be accepted and actually do something. So we're going to refer to the documentation and pass in all the required parameters and the data. And then we're going to set that in our request object. And then we're going to use the URL session uh, class and we're going to fire off that request and capture the response from the API. All right, with that said, let's jump into Xcode and do this. So I've got an Xcode project open right here and I'm just going to write some high level uh, comments just to keep track of what we're doing. Uh, so we're going to have our URL, we're going to have our URL request, whoops, request. We're going to uh, specify the header, specify the body, um, set the request type, and we are going to get the URL session. Uh, we're going to create the data task, and finally, fire off the data task, which is essentially making the API call. So first, let us create a URL object. Uh, we're going to have a string URL. Uh, the funny thing is that the endpoint is not really specified here. I, I had to check the sample code to actually see that the endpoint is this right here. So that's the endpoint that we're going to hit oops, as a string. And when you create a URL object like this, it could be nil. And so, you know, we're just going to guard URL not equal nil. Else, uh, just print error creating URL object. And then now we're going to create a request. Actually, this one's going to be a var because we're going to have to modify it. 
it's not going to be a constant. So URL, uh, sorry, request from a uh, URL. Now, you can just use this one where you pass in the URL, or you can have this one where you can specify a cache policy and timeout interval. Um, in here in the documentation, it doesn't really tell you what sorts of things to set for that. But taking a look at their sample code, I can I, I can see that they when they create their request, they use a time interval of 10 and they use this sort of cache policy right here. So I'm just going to mimic that. So for this cache policy, use protocol cache policy and the timeout interval is 10. And I'm going to pass in the URL and force unwrap it because we've already checked that it's not nil. So there's our request, but it's not ready to go yet. We have to specify the header. Now, if you take a look at the property for specifying or adding the headers to the request, it's an optional dictionary of string where the keys are strings and the value are strings. All right, so that's what we're going to need to specify. Let headers equal. So that's going to be our dictionary. Let's take a look at what keys we need. So this is going to be a key. This is going to be the value. This is going to be a key. This is going to be the value. And this is my API key right here. And also this one and this one right here. So uh, this one, I'm just going to copy and paste from here to save myself some typing. But as you can see, this is the key for that parameter. And this is the value for that, right? And then you have comma and because because this is one key value pair in your dictionary right and then here's the second key value pair there's the key for that guy and there's my api key now don't try and use it because i'm i'm going to cancel my uh subscription here so it's not going to be valid anyways but that's the value that's that that's the value for this uh, parameter and then we have a sept string just like down here but there's also this content type application forward slash json and that basically indicates uh, what data type the body is uh, of the request. So I'm going to copy that. And I find it funny that they didn't have it here because, I mean, it's not immediately obvious for everybody, especially people who haven't really worked with manually creating their requests before. All right, so those are our headers, right? And we can set it request.allhttp header fields and headers. I'm actually going to call it just header. Okay, now specify the body. So the request HTTP body expects an optional data object. So what needs to happen is down here in the documentation, it tells us what sort of data it needs in the body, but we need to turn this JSON object into uh, a data object. So what we do is we start specifying the body as a, uh, let's do JSON body, JSON object like that. So in Swift, that would be a dictionary, right? And you would have key value pairs representing that. Now, obviously you would put your own, like whatever URL that you wanna hit and extract text from. Let's take a look at what this error is specifying here. Insert as string any. Yeah, so for this JSON object here, we have all of the keys are strings, as you can see here, but the value is mixed. Like we have strings here, we have Boolean here, we have string here. So um, this is going to be as a type of dictionary where the keys are strings and the values are any. Right, so that's our JSON object that represents our body. But remember, we need to turn it into a, a data object. So we're going to try to turn it into a, um, a piece of data. I'm going to call this request body. So we're going to use JSON serialization dot data. And we're going to pass in our JSON object here, right? and Take a look at this it throws so we're going to have to uh, wrap this in a do catch block and use the try keyword and so we're going to pass in the json object here and the options is going to be um, 
fragments allowed. And oh, we got to put the try here. And we're going to do do. All right, so put that in a do block. Catch any potential errors. Uh, error creating the data object from the JSON. All right, so we have our. And then in here, we are going to then set the request uh, HTT body equals request body. Okay, so now we've specified our header parameters and we've also specified our um, request body, right? We've taken this JSON object, turned it into a data object, and assigned it to HTTP body. Now we have to set the uh, request type or HTTP method because if you take a look at these endpoints here, you'll notice that these are uh, get. You see this get in this post here? Well, that indicates the HTTP method of your request. Um, if you're not familiar with what these are, um, just know that when you're sending off these web requests, there is a type that you can specify. You put get usually to represent uh, requests to retrieve data, whereas post is usually for submitting data. So if we take a look at here, well, actually, it, it tells you right here that this endpoint is going to be a post request. And so that's what we're going to set here. And there is a property for that, HTTP method. We're going to set this to uh, post. And I think if I remember correctly, yeah, it's all caps like that. So we've got all of this. Um, next up is the URL session stuff. So we're going to get a, a shared session. And we're going to create the data task from that uh, where we pass in the request that we've created. We've worked so hard to create this. And we're going to be able to specify a completion handler, which is going to capture the response from the API. And then we're going to take a look at what's inside the data. So let's choose that. And before we forget, let's assign it to its own constant data task equals because this is going to return a data task for us. So let's pass in the request. Let's open up a closure for this completion handler by double clicking it. And keep in mind, all of these parameters are optional. So there's data, there's response, and there's error. So I'm going to do a quick check in here, check uh, for errors. I'm going to say if error is nil, meaning there was no error, then I'm going to try to parse the data. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing. And data is not nil. So we do have some data in there. Then I'm going to try to parse out the data. And I'm going to say let. Well, um, first, let's use JSON serialization to uh, parse our data into a dictionary since we're using it up there already. So JSON serialization dot JSON object with data. So we're going to grab the data in here. We're going to pass it into there. We're going to specify our reading options and we're going to have to capture any errors that happen. And it says any right here, but the return type is going to be, here's a sample of the response, uh, is basically going to be a dictionary and we're going to be able to check this dictionary. So we can see that all the keys are strings and the response could be Boolean or string. Uh, so we're going to specify any. So uh, let's go ahead and use that JSON object for data. I'm going to force unwrap it because we've already checked. Uh, I'm going to choose mutable containers and uh, we're going to say as a string any. You're going to try to do that and let dictionary equals that we're gonna to have to wrap it in a do catch block or 
response data. All right. So uh, we're going to try to just see what we get here. So I'm going to set a breakpoint there, and then we can go take a look at what we have. All right. Um, I'm going to do that. All right. Moment of truth. So this is how you specify your own request. Oh, I always forget this one more thing. Fire off the data task. Data task dot resume. Um, so this is how we create our own request. Let's return there if there's an error. All right. Um, so this is how we create our own request, fire it off to the API and capture the response. It's a lot more uh, involved versus having an SDK and just simply calling a method and you know specifying a closure um, because we're you know doing all of this manually. So let's take a look. And I'll tell you, I am actually doing this for the first time. I don't know what this API is going to return because I just signed up for the free plan here. The thing is, you have to specify a credit card, which I'm not that happy about, but I understand because they're going to start charging you after 50 right so i kind of get that so the, anyways this is the first time let me see this oh so we did get something back right so this is really cool error message okay so we we don't have an error processing time exit code parsed results one element oh Look at that. The parsed text is Google. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> All right, our job is done. Now you can work with any API. Remember though, each API has its own specific documentation on how to work with that API. If there's an API that you'd like me to do a specific demonstration of, just simply leave a comment below. And if you learned something in this video, please, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you turn on bell notifications so you don't miss the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.